aviation security has always received great attention. Nevertheless, plane crashes do happen. It happens that a small burnt out light bulb can lead to tragedy, and sometimes circumstances develop in such a way that no one is able to resist them. We will tell you about 10 major incidents and their causes right now. One of the worst and most ridiculous disasters in the history of Russian aviation occurred in 1994. An Airbus A310 with a first-class crew on board, flying from Moscow to Hong Kong, disappeared from the radar screens near the city of Mustrachansk. The wreckage of the plane was found in the forest. 75 people were killed. After decoding the speech recorder, everything immediately became clear. The plane was on autopilot when the commander put his 15-year-old son at the helm. The teenager's actions led to a partial shutdown autopilot, but no one noticed. The plane began to turn smoothly to the right, which puzzled the pilots. In 30 seconds, the roll increased so much that the side went into a stall, and then into a spin. For about a minute, the commander could not change places with his son and sit at the helm due to severe overloads. When the pilots took control, the plane began to climb sharply and then fell again. After another minute, they crashed. The specialists found out that the crew did not know one of the features of the Airbus A310. If you exert effort on the steering wheel for 30 seconds, the autopilot was silently turned off. Misunderstanding of the problem, strong overload, loss of spatial orientation and time constraints left the pilots no chance to save the plane. The plane crash with a large number of fatalities on the ground occurred in 2002 at an air show in the Ukrainian city of Lvov. The aircraft did not have enough altitude to perform aerobatics. The Su-27 fighter caught tree branches with its wing, hit the concrete, crashed into a crowd of spectators and exploded. 77 people died, including 28 children, hundreds more were injured. Two pilots managed to eject. The official reasons for the tragedy were named deviation of the crew from the flight mission and an error in piloting. Five people were sentenced to various prison terms and heavy fines. Su-27 Commander Vladimir Tapana received 14 years in prison, co-pilot Yuri Yegor of 8 years, both were released ahead of schedule. None of the accused pleaded guilty. Later in an interview, Vladimir Tapanar said that he did everything correctly, and the problem was in the plane. At some point, the fighter stopped obeying the controls. It is also important that the pilots were denied a flight rehearsal, probably due to fuel economy, and the organizers allowed the audience too close to the airfield. This is a gross violation by international standards. In 2009, in Poland, performing the same figure, another Su-27 crashed, the pilots were killed, the reason for the fall was not disclosed. No matter how important the flight is, the weather makes its own adjustments to flight plans. In 2010, Polish President Lech Kaczynski, together with the country's political elite and military leaders, flew to Russia to participate in morning events on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of the Katyn massacre. The Smolensk Severny airfield warned the crew about thick fog and the absence of conditions for reception. However, the commander of the presidential plane decided to try to land and drop lower than it should be. The board caught on trees, rolled over onto the roof and fell in the forest, 300 meters from the runway. 96 people died. Russian experts called the cause of the disaster due to improper actions of the crew, in conditions of thick fog. At the same time, psychological pressure was exerted on the aircraft commander. Outsiders entered the cockpit, including the drunken general of the Polish Air Force Andrzej Blasik, who insisted on landing in Smolensk, otherwise the president's planned meetings would have to be cancelled. It was noted that the plane descended too quickly, and the pilots ignored the signal of a dangerous approach to the ground. The features of the landscape played an important role. The features of the landscape played an important role. Flying over the ravine, the radio altimeter showed a height of several tens of meters, and when suddenly the ravine ended, the height turned out to be 11 meters, and the wing touched the top of a tree. The Polish side believes that in addition to the pilots, Russian dispatchers are to blame, as well as the technical shortcomings of the airport.
The Everglades Swamp disaster was remembered not only for the strange circumstances, but also for the paranormal phenomena that followed. In 1972, a new aircraft Lockheed L-1011, flying less than six months, came to land in the American city of Miami. The pilots released the landing gear, it worked properly, but the warning light for the release of the front wheels did not light up. Then the crew turned on the autopilot and began to reflect on the question, whether the landing gear came out or the light bulb just burned out. During this time, someone accidentally touched the control wheel, and the autopilot turned off, the plane began to descend, smoothly and imperceptibly, it was at night. The signal sounded about the loss of altitude, but the pilots did not hear it, as they were busy with the light bulb. The plane fell into the Everglades swamp, which slowed down the fall, and also prevented a fire, so of the 176 people on board, 77 survived, 99 died. Interestingly, after the crash, some parts of the crashed liner were installed by Eastern Airlines on their other planes of the same configuration. Soon, employees of this airline began to report encounters with the ghosts of the pilots of Flight 401. Allegedly, in flight, they came to the rescue in different situations and then disappeared. Eastern Airlines executives considered the ghost to be fiction, but ordered the removal of parts of the crashed Lockheed L-1011 from other aircraft. The Concorde was a special aircraft that was famous for its safety, supersonic speed and flight altitude. They saw the future of aviation behind the Concorde, although it had its drawbacks, high fuel consumption and engine noise. It was expensive to fly on such an aircraft, but the passengers saved time and felt safe, for 24 years of operation, not a single accident. Everything changed after a single disaster on July 25, 2000. Taking off from the French Charles de Gaulle airport, the wing of the plane caught fire, and after flying about two kilometers, it fell onto a mini hotel. 113 people died, four of them on the ground. Investigators found out that the cause of the crash was a titanium plate that fell off the DC-10 that took off a minute earlier and was lying on the runway. The plate punctured the Concorde's wheel, pieces of rubber hit the fuel tank, causing the tank to burst, a fire started, and two out of four engines failed. After the disaster, the tires for the Concords were made stronger, and the design of the fuel tanks was reinforced. Three years later, due to the rise in fuel prices, all the remaining Concords were taken out of service. The small Cypriot airline Helios, which had only three planes in its fleet, was remembered for the only plane crash in its history. Immediately after departure from Larnaca, the Boeing 737 crew reported to the dispatcher about the problems on board, a signal was triggered that it was not ready for takeoff. Then the connection with the Boeing was lost, it flew to Greece and began to circle in the waiting approach mode. Two Greek fighters flew up to him and through the windows the military saw a strange picture, the pilots and passengers were unconscious. As it turned out later, they fell asleep due to the depressurization of the cabin. The only one who was conscious was the flight attendant Andreas Perdromo. He tried to take control, but by that time the plane had run out of fuel and crashed in mountainous terrain. Investigators found out that while they were parked on the ground, the engineers checked the interior for leaks. They switched the pressure switch to manual mode, and at the end of the work they forgot to return it to automatic mode. The pilots did not notice this, 121 people died. Forensic experts have established that at the time of the collision with the ground, the passengers were alive. Helios went bankrupt a year after the tragedy. Airplanes with a smile was the name given to the air fleet of the American airline Pacific Southwest Airlines for the characteristic pattern on board. However, the friendly appearance did not become a talisman for the Boeing 727. On a clear day, September 25, 1978. On the approach to the San Diego airport, the dispatcher warned the crew that the training Cessna was flying in front of them. The Boeing pilots replied that they saw Cessna, but less than three minutes later there was a collision. As a result of the impact, the liner damaged important controls, punctured a fuel tank and crashed into a residential area of San Diego. 
Cessna was literally torn to pieces by the blow. Investigators concluded that Boeing pilots were responsible for the collision. For a moment, they lost sight of the light aircraft and, deciding that it had gone out of their way, began to descend. By that time, Cessna was directly under the Boeing, out of sight. One of the worst disasters in the United States claimed the lives of 144 people, including seven on Earth. More than 20 houses were damaged or destroyed. Soon after this tragedy, a system, TCAS, was created and widely implemented, which warns pilots of a dangerous approach to other aircraft. In the Brazilian city of Sao Paulo, runway number 35 liter had a dangerous reputation. It was located within the city and was relatively short. Every now and then planes rolled out of it. In 2007, TAM Airlines Airbus A320 operated the Porto Alegre, Sao Paulo flight. The crew had to land in the rain, on a short lane and with one working reverse of the left engine, the right one was turned off for maintenance. During landing, the liner could not stop in time. At a speed of 170 km per hour, he turned sharply to the left, drove out of the runway, flew over the road and crashed into a building. A massive fire started. A total of 199 people died, 12 of them on the ground. As the decoding of the parametric data showed, after landing, the left Airbus engine slowed down, and the right one continued to work for takeoff. A technical failure is unlikely. Presumably the pilots forgot to move the starboard engine to neutral. As an additional reason, experts named a slippery landing strip, which they did not manage to equip with gutters after repairs. One of the longest-running investigations in plane crash history was Transworld Airlines Flight 800. Twelve minutes after taking off from John F. Kennedy Airport in New York, the plane disappeared from the radar screens. An explosion occurred, the plane was torn in two, the cockpit immediately flew down, the rest flew up for some time on running engines, and then, diving, fell into the ocean. Boeing wreckage was scattered within a radius of three kilometers. 230 people died. Transcripts of the voice recorders showed that the pilots were talking about strange behavior of the fuel gauge. Newspapers wrote about a bomb explosion on board. It took the specialists four long years to find out the true cause of the incident. It turned out that Flight 800 crashed as a result of the explosion of the central fuel tank. A short circuit occurred, the insulation of the wires was broken, and they touched, a spark from the high voltage wire entered the tank and ignited the fuel vapor. The National Transportation Safety Board has issued a list of recommendations to prevent similar disasters in the future. Changes have been made to the Boeing design. Flight 800 served as the basis for the script for the movie destination. When the actions of the crew contradict the actions of the onboard computer, expect trouble. On April 26, 1994, an Airbus A300 of China Airlines operated a flight from Taipei to Nagoya. The commander entrusted the landing in Nagoya to the co-pilot. He accidentally pressed the go-around lever during the descent, which he said to the commander, but did not cancel the command. Then the struggle between man and machine began. The aircraft's autopilot tried to gain altitude while the crew was approaching. Approximately 150 meters from the ground, realizing that the liner does not obey and turns its nose up, the commander takes control. He decides to go to the go-around and adds power to the engines. As a result, the nose of the aircraft lifts up even higher, it loses its lift and literally falls flat on the ground. An important discovery was made during the investigation. The pilots did not know well some of the features of this particular type of Airbus. In particular, the commander was trained on a simulator, which automatically turned off the autopilot when pressing the steering wheel. In this case, the priority remained with the computer, and in the go-around mode, Airbus did not give the pilots the opportunity to lower their nose. The disaster claimed the lives of 264 people, it seems incredible, but 7 survived. 
In the aftermath of the incident, Airbus on all of its aircraft prioritized manual controls in the missed approach mode. That's all. Share the video with your friends. Like and subscribe to the Mood Flow channel. See you soon.